Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another tutorial. This time we're taking a look at the Greg Tech mod, Fusion Reactor. Uh, I'm actually, this is the Feed the Beast client, however, I did upgrade the Greg Tech mod to the 2.08 version of it, uh, primarily because there's a lot of changes to the Fusion Reactors in the newer version that uh, are kind of important and actually make it a lot more useful and uh, really it's a big bump to how much power it produces. So uh, if you are going to play with the Fusion Reactor then it's probably a good idea to upgrade and make use of the newer version. So we'll start with the basic layout here. So this is the Fusion Reactor and it is made using these energy flow circuits, a computer cube, supercondensators, and energy orbs. And then you also need these fusion coils, which are made with highly advanced machine blocks, energy flow circuits, iridium neutron reflectors, and superconductors, and Tesla coils. Now, this is partially world built, partially items. So you have your fusion reactor cube here. You leave two spaces and build three, and you're, we basically build a ring all the way around this uh, fusion reactor cube, just like so. Oops. And this is the coil that makes this thing work. So now you can see in just a second, it should detect that the coil is complete as long as I built it right. Okay, so there's, uh, now it shows coils, yes. So that means it's it recognizes that it has a valid coil set up around it. Now if we look at the uh, fusion reactor itself, you can see the top is kind of the computer cube look, and then the, there's a big open side lamp uh, type uh, side, and there's a smaller side here. This smaller circle side is the output side, and this outputs a huge amount of power. Um, it outputs at 100,000 EU per packet, or per tick, but it's the uh, packet size is 100,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this over a ways. Um, I recommend leaving a good bit of room uh, both to protect your very expensive machine and to give yourself room to actually work. So what we have here, in order to handle the packet size that the fusion reactor is outputting, you need superconductor wire and you need super, uh, super condensators to reduce it down to usable voltages. So here's your recipe for your superconductor wire, advanced machine blocks, energy flow circuits, superconductors, and then the supercondensator takes a highly advanced machine block, superconductors, and energy flow circuits, and lapatronic energy orbs. So very expensive stuff to build, but once you get it built, it actually turns out to be a very, very powerful energy source. So I'm just bringing this over here, and what we're going to do is bring this up, and we're going to have this output this way. Now the super, con uh, super condensators are also directional, so the sides that have the brackets on them are input sides normally, and then the one circle is output. These will take uh, any known voltages, certainly up to the 100,000 per tick that the fusion reactor sends, and it converts it down to 8,000, uh, 8192 EU per tick. So it gets it back down into the EV range that we can actually start converting back down to usable voltages. Uh, if you put a redstone uh, torch on it, it reverses the inputs and outputs just like any other transformer. So that works very much the same as everything else that you're used to working with. And now I'm taking HV transformers and I'm going to use the HV transformer and I'm just using a uh, adjustable energy storage unit to 
collect the power after it goes through the uh, reactor. Now we've got uh, now we have our output hooked up. Next, we need to hook up power to charge it. Uh, unlike most power sources, it does take a starting charge before it will actually start producing power. So we have right now zero stored, and the main re or there's two energy producing recipes. Both of them use these deuterium cells and you can combine that with a tritium cell or you can combine it with helium-3 cells uh, whichever is uh, most suitable. The tritium cell version produces a little bit less power but it uh, takes less to trigger the start of it so we're going to use that one so we can demonstrate this easier. And now I'm going to take HV cable and I don't know if it matters if it connects to the uh, coils. I don't think so, but I just like taking it above anyway. Now you can also automate the uh, the system. Um, I believe it's the top will put your uh, cells into the inputs, and the bottom will take off uh, take out of the uh, output side. So there, that's how you would automate, go about automating the uh, system. And now we're going to take, uh, let's see, let's bring this down to the ground here. And I'm just using my interdimensional storage units here to connect up to this to get it charged. Whoops. Oh, I know what I was going to do because I wanted to actually charge this faster and it's the packet size that matters so as long as we don't go over the packet size now the while it will output the EV power or the uh, the uh, 100,000 power per tick it can't take that much on its charging side so there we go get this set up to charge it I seem to be draining power still I'll have to go check my last spots that I was working. So now we should be able to come over here and we can see that it's charging up. And we will probably actually see it voltage coming through. Uh, it seems to let power come through uh, even while it's charging. But uh, we'll just let this charge up to 40 million uh, EU is the uh, trigger point for the tritium and deuterium combination. And we're actually going to break this so that it won't uh, leak voltage through. Should help it go a little bit faster. And let's take a look here. We should be, yeah, so we're charging at 20,000 per tick. Um, again, every all of the uh, machines in uh, industrial craft side, it's all about the packet size. So even though this is charging it at 20,000 EU per tick, the packet size that's coming out of the um, out of the interdimensional storage units is still only uh, 2048. So you can see the HP cable actually has some loss there too. So it's uh, it doesn't matter how many of these we connect. It's as long as you don't go get the uh, voltage too high, then you won't have any problems with your machines exploding. And that goes for any of your machines as well. So you can see that the uh, reaction just kicked off. So now that it's kicked off, we can actually remove our uh, charging power. You might want to leave it all hooked up just in case uh, you end up needing it in the future. You can see that the uh, reaction generated an empty cell. I think, I don't think you have to take those out, but I'm going to take that one out just, just in case. And now we can also hook up our output and this will uh, charge. Um, I'm not sure exactly how fast it's going to end up charging because it's still uh, it has to be converted down and the transformers will only output their uh, output volt voltage once per tick so 
and I think that's split between all sides. So if we want to, wanted to actually capture the full potential of the uh, reactor and capture all of this energy, we would actually have to uh, we would have to use a bunch of setups like this, which we can do. So we can actually go. We'll just set up a couple of these close to each other. And the really nice, uh, really cool thing about the, uh, as we can see this one's charging. And if we were to put a bunch of them together, then we would see that it would charge very quickly. Now, as far as this reactor goes, as long as it keeps running, the amount of EU that's stored here doesn't matter anymore. So if we did get something set up, you know, you set up enough of the uh, transformers coming off of it to actually use all of the power that it produces, then you can run this thing as long as you keep supplying it with the input materials. You can run it forever without actually getting it back up above its charge point. So you don't have to worry about uh, running it too low. Now you can see uh, the fusion reactor itself, it's charging up really fast. Uh, produces a huge amount of power. It's going to cap out in this spot at 100 million. This is the maximum that it can actually store, but it will keep running until, I mean it just keeps running and the extra power is basically just lost. We can also set up another line of uh, superconductor wire off of this side uh, so we can use that to charge other, or to uh, run other equipment off of. Uh, the one other thing, let me, I'll have to set it up again real quick. Um, there is, there are two recipes that produce power, and we can actually change between which recipes that we're using on the fly. So, uh, we went from deuterium, the next cycle we'll use one of these helium-3 cells, and the, um, deuterium-helium-3 recipe uses, uh, it produces twice as much power as the tritium recipe does. And it still produces helium cells as output. I guess the uh, empty cells will just be there whenever you pull all of the other uh, material out. But uh, they'll, it'll produce twice as much power and I think it's it takes twice as long for the reaction to complete, so you you don't produce as many helium cells as output, but it's a more efficient overall reaction. And then there's one more recipe that uses um, let me see which the it uses lithium and wolfram cells. Um, let's see where's a wolfram cell. Where are you hiding? There we are. And this recipe is not a power producing recipe. It actually consumes power. Um, and what it does, as soon as the uh, last reaction here finishes up, come on, hurry up. Seems to take forever, and it's actually going to be a very long reaction to produce this, but I'll let it get started here anyway. Come on, finish up this one. I want to make sure that I actually have the right materials in here. I'm pretty sure I do. So you can see now that the power is draining. Uh, it's no longer actually producing power. It's actually draining power and what this will do is it's going to produce iridium ore. It's one of the few ways of producing iridium ore. So if you are at an excess of materials for your, uh, of all of the other material to build these, you could uh, either build one fusion reactor set up just to make the uh, um, iridium, or what I was, was kind of thinking as an idea 
was set up one fusion reactor that um, I guess it doesn't take nearly as much power to produce these as I thought it did, especially once it's spun uh, started. Um, so as long as you're you can supply the uh, enough power to keep this charged, then you won't have any problems here. Uh, I'm not positive about the once because it oh, it's supposed to take 90 million EU to trigger this reaction, and I think it's probably going to work just like any other reaction where as long as the because uh, it didn't actually drop any power, so as long as you can maintain your power levels, then you should be able to keep the uh, reactions still keep these reactions running indefinitely. And we'll just get ready to switch this back over to the uh, helium-3 deuterium recipe. And you can see it drains, it does drain a bit of power while it's, while it's running, but as long as you may manage it, um, then you should be okay. And since it doesn't seem to drain as much power as I'd originally thought it was going to, uh, you could really just have get one fusion reactor set up to power most of your things and then when you if you decide you need some iridium and you have some uh, lithium and wolfram then you can set up the reaction let it run for a few cycles and then uh, switch it back over to the uh, power producing reactions uh, get, fill it up entirely there so now you can see it switched right back over to producing power and way more power than we're consuming. So you know, basically you can produce a few iridium more, switch back over to power production, charge it all the way back up, and basically kind of switch it back and forth between the two as needed. Uh, anyway, there. Uh, just as a reminder, the, the voltages that this thing is producing and sending out on the latest version are very high. Uh, it doesn't produce as high of voltages on the current uh, version that is included with the Feed the Beast pack, so you can actually use uh, the 4X insulated HV cables to collect the power on the Feed the Beast version that is currently out, but it will uh, it will vaporize your 4H uh, or 4 insulated wires uh, if you were to try and use that with the latest 2.08 version. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please let me know if you have suggestions for more tutorials in the future and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!